Hello everyone and welcome to the free and live Joomla 2.5 multilingual webinar. My name is Bernie and I'll be moderating today's event. I'm the host of the free and live Learn the Basics and Beyond the Basics webinar sponsored by CloudAccess.net. John Neubauer, a very active member of the Joomla community, will present the majority of this webinar. He'll discuss the three major concepts that are native to building a multilingual Joomla 2.5 site. Attendees can expect to learn how these concepts interact and how you can apply them to your own Joomla site. Before we get to John's presentation, I'll highlight a few of the newest features of Joomla 2.5 and after his presentation, I'll help moderate a few of your questions about developing a multilingual lingual site. We do have a lot of attendees today, so if we don't get to your question during the webinar, you can post your questions to forum.joomla.org in the 2.5 category, there is a language form uh, for you to post questions and review similar issues. Please save all your questions for the end of the webinar. You can write your question in the question and answer field to the right of your screen. This intermediate webinar is intended for users who possess a good understanding of Core Joomla functions. And when completed, this webinar will, will be available for viewing through the cloudaccess.net YouTube channel. Now, as many as, uh, as many, many of you know, Joomla 2.5 was released in January of this year, and the stable version is now available for demo trials at demo.joomla.org. New features have brought a new realm of usability and functionality for both site administrators and users. At this point, I'm going to take just a few minutes to highlight the most important new features. Past versions of Joomla were designed to run on the MySQL database, and a lot of configuration was required if a company wanted to use a different type of database. 2.5 has been rewritten re so that different drivers can be written for different versions of L SQL databases. Joomla 2.5 also features options directly in the control panel, where users can perform a one-click update for the Joomla CMS, or any non-core components that they feature on their site. Additionally, Joomla 2.5 has added an exciting new natural language search function. This feature incorporated auto-completion and stemming. Stemming is the ability for the search to use the root of the word you entered to locate matches. This new search is faster and more versatile than the standard search. Another key feature is CAPTCHA implementation. CAPTCHA uses scrambled text to prevent robotic spammers from submitting forms. Joomla 2.5 gains an API that lets you use CAPTCHAs in your forms. Once you sign up for free with reCAPTCHA and enter your keys, you can enable CAPTCHA on new user registration. There are also offline options, offline mode options for working on your site while it's offline and there is a user notes area, a place to store information on your users. Of course, these are only some of the new features. You can launch a demo site at demo.joomla.org to play around with the features yourself or read more about them at joomla.org. One of the things that Joomla focused on with its most recent release was the internationalization of websites and encouraging users and website owners to create sites that can be accessed from anywhere in the world. One of the biggest barriers to that was language accessibility. The Joomla community tackled that head-on with the new and refined language manager and other multilingual capabilities, now available in Joomla 2.5. Webmasters and content creators can now create websites to be presented in multiple languages without ever needing to step outside of the options available in the Joomla core software. This is a big step forward and represents a set of capabilities that can make websites much more accessible, reaching out to a much larger audience. It's now my pleasure to introduce John Neubauer, who will present this information to you. John is a Joomla user, group organizer, an editor of the Joomla Community Magazine, a member of the Joomla Marketing, Launch, and Bug Squad teams, a Joomla developer, and very active with Joomla forums and Joomla EDU. Simply put, he's a Joomla junkie. Hey, John. Hi, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, glad to be here today. Okay. Uh, thanks for coming, everybody, today. Uh, it's really great to see how many people are here today. 
Uh, we're going to jump right into our topic today and looking at the new capabilities available in Joomla 2.5 that the Joomla language manager brings to our sites. Uh, especially in today's online world, as so many international transactions and international attention is created through the web, Joomla wants to make it easier for, uh, for, for all of that to happen. And uh, as Ryan mentioned, one of the biggest barriers we see to having a truly internationally accessible website is this language barrier. While anyone can physically visit your site, whether or not they can actually understand what you have there is, is another story altogether. And this is where the new Joomla Language Manager comes in. With its capabilities, your site can easily present the same content across multiple languages, making your site accessible for, much, for a much greater audience. Uh, so let's jump right in. For those of you that are already a little familiar with Joomla, there are three main concepts to having a multi-language site. Once you get those down and understand how they interact and, and what they do with each other, it's a lot of fun to see your site come together in multiple languages. But the first concept to, that we're going to look at today is the languages themselves. What languages do you want to present in your website? And how do you install and enable and use those languages? Secondly, we have the menu or the navigational structure of the site within those languages and how is your site organized to allow navigation across languages and within languages. And lastly is the content itself. Uh, how do we create and organize our content to create this seamless transition between languages. So uh, enough of our slides here. Let's, let's jump right in and uh, see how these three concepts work together. Uh, let me make sure I'm showing this here. There we go. Um, as you can see, I've, I've got a new Joomla site here. This is a fresh, out-of-the-box Joomla installation using the latest Joomla version. Um, and uh, I installed this very easily through demo.joomla.org. Uh, and I, actually, with Cloud Access as a platform, I didn't even have to go through the installation steps. They do that all for me. Uh, right now, you can see some content here, uh, but it's, it's all in English. If, uh, if a non-English speaking user wanted to use my site, they might have to rely on something like Google Translate and just hope that whatever it spits out actually makes sense. So let's start transforming this into a multilingual site. Uh, first, I'm going to install a new language pack in my site. These contain the little strings that appear through the site, both in the back end and the front end. And they're generated by the Joomla software. Without these, we could still create our multilingual content, and readers could still see it. But users would be seeing little bits of English in various parts of the site through the system. And that would interrupt what should be a nice, smooth experience in their language. You can get these language packs from Joomla. The Joomla project has several language translation teams that are in charge of maintaining these for various languages. Uh, so we're going to head on over here to the Joomla extensions directory and uh, search for my language. In, in this site, we're going to add uh, the capability to have uh, French language and French content in our site. Uh, so we see right here, this is the uh, French translation for our Joomla content and it contains information about it and a download link that's going to take you to where the uh, language packs themselves are. And uh, you can grab the latest language pack for your particular version of Joomla. Uh, now, just to note, we can switch languages in 1.5 and, and 1.6, but a lot of the capabilities and uh, potential has been very much refined in Joomla 2.5. So that's what we'll be dealing with here today, and it's probably best if if you're wanting to build a multilingual site, that you use Joomla 2.5 and be able to take advantage of those features. Uh, so once this is downloaded, we can uh, head back over to our extension manager and uh, very easily uh, install or just upload, just like any other extension. We're going to upload and install our French language pack on, on the site. So we can see installing the package was successful. Once it's installed, let's head over to the language manager over here, and we can see what's been happening. You'll notice that while English is still our default language, we've also got an option for French here. 
and we can change which language is the default language and you might want to do that if your site is to prim primarily focus on French or if you speak French and want to work in French with English as a secondary option. But we'll leave English as the primary option for now. Uh, these languages are the system languages that we mentioned earlier. They affect the output created by the Joomla system, not our content itself. So let's head over to this content tab here. And this is where we start setting up the capability to allow users to switch between languages on the front end and for us to be able to present our content and the articles in English. So we're going to add a new language here. And we've already got English, so we'll add our French language. Uh, we'll just call this French. And uh, the uh, native word in, in the French language, we'll add that to our uh, form here. The URL language code we're going to leave as FR, and this is the bit of uh, URL path that's going to appear after the menu, uh, after the domain name, I'm sorry, and before the URL alias. And this helps Joomla with its uh, automatic language detection and being able to point people to the right home page. The same with the image prefix, we're going to leave that as FR2. And uh, this tells Joomla which uh, image to pull if we, want, if we enable the functionality on the front end to uh, show little flags that allow our users to switch back and forth between languages and those icons there. The language tag is important. Uh, we're going to put this in here. And this is the same language tag as the name of our uh, language code over here. That's the same as our language pack. So this is a lowercase fr dash uppercase fr. And this does have to be the same as the language pack that you just installed. So when you're installing that, or if you're looking at the language manager, make a note of that before you come over here. We'll make sure this is published. And uh, we'll press save and close up here to save this. And now we've got two content languages. And this is going to allow us to organize all our content, our articles, our menus, and our modules. Uh, and be able to present those on the front end in their appropriate languages. Uh, we're going to be focusing in this webinar on the idea of making this site accessible in multiple languages. But another interesting facet of the language manager here that I'll mention is language overrides. And you can see that here in the overrides tab. This lets us find any given language string. And uh, we'll look for these. This is the system output that we mentioned. Um, in, uh, that's generated by the Joomla software. So uh, we can find any given language string, and we'll search for one here. Uh, we'll look for one of the search, search language strings. Um, and uh, let's look like this one. And, and say we want to change this to uh, search all uh, content. What, th what this lets us do is create uh, overrides, what would normally be reserved for people um, going and digging through their language files and stuff like that in order to find the correct string and hope you, hopefully you modify it correctly. This lets us very easily override those language uh, strings. And now any time that this language string is used in the front end, it will show our new language uh, string that we've added here instead of the original one. So a very handy feature um, that, that's available in, in our uh, new sites here with overriding languages. Um, we're going to move on to the navigation aspect of multi-language management, the second step in creating our multi-language site. But first we're going to go activate a couple cool features through Joomla plugins that make our user experience so much easier. So let's head over to the Joomla plugin manager over here. And uh, we're just going to search for language. And this returns two results. Both are unpublished by default on your new Joomla site. The first is the Joomla language code uh, plugin, the system language code plugin. Um, and uh, what this does, if, uh, let, me, let me enable this real quick. Um, what this is going to do when enabled is it's going to allow you to override the language code that's normally displayed next to the generator tag and stuff like that in your site on the front end. For example, here we have English installed. Uh, but English, E-N-G-B, actually stands for English Great Britain. But my site and, and myself, I, I'm located here in the United States. So I can override this uh, with my local English language code, which is E-N-U-S. 
And you can do this for any of the system languages that you have installed. And what this will do is alter that bit of output on the front end so that um, your uh, site will be properly displayed in geographic with its ge correct geographical language designation. This can be important, especially for uh, search engines or for providing local search results and making sure that people know where you are. The second plugin option that we have here is the language filter. This is a cool plugin that actually automatically detects the, the user's language in their browser and sends them to the, the appropriate home page for that particular language instead of the default home page. So we want to enable that. The other one that you're going to want to enable uh, at a minimum is the menu item associations. What this lets us do is um, create associations or equivalencies between menu items so that uh, if somebody's browsing my site and is on the English About Us page and they switch languages to French, uh, they'll automatically be taken to that equivalent menu item in French instead of to the home page. And this, again, helps users with this seamless transition between languages so they don't have to find their way back around your site in the new language. So we definitely want to enable this plugin as well and enable some of the features over here and save and close that. Now back to uh, making our site accessible. Now that we've set up our additional language, uh, we're going to move on to this navigation concept of how do we let users switch between languages and then navigate in their own language. Um, so let's head over to the menu manager to start with this. We already have a main menu here that we're using uh, on our site that has a couple menu options here. You'll notice that these menu items have their language set to all. This is kind of the default and it's a global, all-encompassing uh, language setting that's really not very specific. Uh, and we're going to rearrange this in just a minute as we start to segment our navigation by language. But before we do that, we need to go create our new menus to hold the navigation for each of our languages. So we're actually going to create two menus here. We're going to create an English menu. Uh, even though we already have one, we want to leave our default menu item there, uh, or our default uh, menu and menu items there. So we'll create a, an English menu item, and we'll create another one for French. All right and uh, save that one as well. Uh, it's important that we create both of these. Uh, without these two menu items, it would be very difficult for us to allow seamless navigation within any given language. So uh, a lot, uh, creating these menus allows us to create these switches between language and uh, seamlessly transition. Uh, without doing this, we wouldn't be able to really pull that off. So now that we've created these menus, we can add our language-specific navigation to them. I'm going to take a quick shortcut here and uh, use some new tools that we have available in Joomla 2.5 and or Joomla 1.6 plus, I believe, um, and use our batch processing tools to actually copy these menu items over into their appropriate menus. So we're going to add this to the English menu and process that. And we're actually going to copy these over into the French menu as well. All right. Uh, so once that's done, we can go about uh, we can go about customizing uh, each of these menus to reflect the appropriate language that they represent. Uh, so again, we're switching to the English menu here, and using our batch processing tools, we can uh, easily assign a language to all of the menu items here. And this designates these as uh, being strictly for the English language. Uh, and we'll switch over to the French menu item here and do the same. So uh, we will assign these to the French language. An interesting addition that Joomla has made, now that, now that we've got these all assigned, um, uh, the interesting addition that is made that we mentioned earlier in our plugins is menu item associations. What this means is that we can create associations or equivalencies of menu items from one language to another. So if a user ends up on this getting started page here in this language, uh, what we can do is create an, a menu item association to our English language in that same page here. So when they land on this page and they switch languages, 
since I've associated this with um, the other language, uh, the user will automatically be taken to that menu item instead of back to the home page. So the last step uh, after we've created these, the last step in creating these language-centric navigation menus is assigning a home page to each language. We have the global home page already, but we want to be able to present customized content or translated content uh, for each language instead of uh, the default here. Um, so uh, with, with a, the, these menu items assigned to their language, we can actually click on the little star icon here to set it as default. But instead of seeing the star there that you traditionally see, you're going to see the little flag icon for that language. And this designates that this is the home page for this language. So when a user comes to your site and the site detects that they are in a French browser or a French operating system, they will automatically be directed to this home page as opposed to the default one. Um, and we can go back over here and do the same thing for our English menu. So now that we've uh, created our navigation structure, uh, we've just set it up here and haven't really done a lot with it yet. Um, we're, we're actually getting really close to completing this multilingual setup. The last step for navigation is letting users see these different menus. Right now, if a user comes to the site and they still see this main menu, it's not tied to any specific language. So we're going to go back over here to the module manager where the uh, menu modules are from. And here's our about Joomla menu module that shows on the front page. So we're going to take this and we're actually going to uh, change this to the English language here. Actually, let me open it and, and uh, change it from inside the module. So we're going to change this to the English language. And we're also going to assign it to the uh, English pages so that when a user is redirected to this English language, they see this menu module for the English language. So we're going to uh, save this again. And uh, we're just going to copy this duplicate this module because we're going to show the same uh, menu, we're going to show the same module in the same position, but we're going to switch uh, languages to French. And so we're going to select the French menu, we're going to select the French language, and instead of showing it on the English pages and, or the uh, home pages, we're going to show this on uh, the French language pages. So when a user comes to uh, the site and they see the French language, they will see their appropriate content and their appropriate navigation. All right, so we can save and close that. The last thing that we need to do here to allow this navigation is uh, we're going to create a, or add really, a language uh, switcher module that's going to allow users to switch between languages. And you see the language switcher option here. What this does is um, exactly what it says. Um, it presents a display um, that allows users to very easily switch between, uh, between their uh, languages so they can decide which language they want. So let me find the, the correct position here. I think we want this in position 7. And you have kind of two options here. One, you can use a drop-down, which is simply a drop-down box that presents the available languages. Um, we're not going to use that. We're going to use the image flags. And this, like we mentioned earlier, is going to present flag icons that will be used so that um, they can see the flag for their language and easily switch between these. And we're going to assign this to all pages because we want them to be able to switch uh, between all, uh, switch languages no matter which page they're on. So we'll save and close that. So now that we've set up our languages, We've um, added the French language, and we've created a structure to allow visitors to navigate around those languages, and we've given them the option to easily switch between languages. We're doing pretty good here. Now on to the last aspect of creating multilingual sites, and this is the content itself. While we've cr already created the structure of the site, we need to customize the content. So we'll go over here and we'll actually start with the categories. We're going to follow a similar process um, here uh, that we did with the uh, the 
menus, we're first going to use our batch options to set these to be the English language. So all the content in here is, uh, is English. Uh, and then we'll clone these. Um, we're going to copy them. All right. Let's just add them in here somewhere. Add to root. And I need to copy those, not move them. Process. Sorry, bear with me here for just a second. You have to get all these things right at the same time. Okay, so we've uh, copied our categories here, and um, we, we do want to copy these, even if it's just a small site like we have here with just a couple articles. You may not think it's important to copy just a couple categories that we have here and assign them to their appropriate languages and the same with the content. But as your site grows and as you add uh, new sections to your site, it's going to be important that you're able to easily segment these. So uh, if you can do this when you start your site, uh, it's going to be a lot easier to manage your site as it grows. So we're also going to assign the, these copied categories that we created. We're going to assign them to the French language. So that now we have uh, the same category structure for each one of these. Um, but uh, one's in English and one's in French. Um, we'll do the same thing with our articles, uh, except for over here, because I don't actually speak French, unfortunately. Um, so you don't want to see me trying to translate them myself. I actually went and used Google Translate and cheated there prior to doing this. And I have all, all the articles here in English and then in French. So what we're going to do here, uh, and you'll follow a similar process. You may already have English content. You may be translating it yourself, or maybe you have somebody else translating it, but you're going to create both of the articles, one for English, one for French, or whatever language you choose. Um, again, we have the same problem here where our language is set to all. So what we're going to do is uh, grab all of our English language uh, articles, and set those to the English language. And this will match the, the categories that we set up earlier. So these are now all English language articles. All right? And you can see that reflected over here. Um, so now I'm going to filter these really quickly here so that we can get a, do this a little bit faster. The rest of these are the French language articles that I translated prior to this. And inside them is the same content, just translated into French. Um, so we're actually going to uh, move these over to the French language so that they have the correct language designation and they can be shown appropriately. Um, but the other thing that we need to do, and again our batch processes here can help us, is we need to move them over to the uh, French category. And we have to do that in order uh, to, again, keep our categorization straight. So we're going to move these. Uh, we're going to move these articles back over to uh, the new categories that we've created here. All right, and let me move these blog posts over into their blog category. All right. Um, so now we've actually categorized our content and. Um, uh, set this up so that each each um, um, category has its correct content and its translated content. We've created a menu structure. The last thing that we really need to do um, is uh, set up, uh, go back and correct the navigation. We've already set up the navigation structure that we need. Uh, but what we still have to do is come back over here to our French menu, since we now have these French articles added, and um, change which categories or articles they point to in order to get them uh, showing to the correct um, page. So let, let's go through here and edit these really quickly. Very simple process. And we'll have it pulling from the uh, correct uh, categories here. I'm going to save this one.
And we'll go through here and edit this as well. Getting started. All right, where does this go? All right, and one more here. And it looks like we forgot to set up a menu item association here. And it's important that we do that so people can navigate through the site. So let's go ahead and uh, add that here as well. Save and close. OK. Uh, actually, I, now that I just mentioned that, I forgot to set up that association. All right, park blog. There we go. Uh, so with that done, let's go check out our site and see if we uh, did all this right. Let's come over here to the front end of our site. And uh, first thing you're going to notice here is that um, our URL path has changed very slightly. Joomla detected that I was in an English language browser, and it redirected me to the English homepage. And as you can see here, my content is still English. It looks like it... Uh, removed my modules here. So let me go back and uh, assign the additional peripheral modules that we had, our login module, our other menu module over here that we had. Uh, both of these need to get assigned to the English language uh, as well. So let me go back over here. And uh, where's our login form? So we actually have to follow the same process here. We're going to uh, make this uh, English language. And we'll also assign it to the English pages. All right, we can save that. And we're going to do the same thing for uh, we'll actually create a new a new login module, so that can, that that will be able to be shown on the French language page. So let me go through these steps very quickly of filling this out, signing it to the correct position. And we don't want to put it on all pages. What we want to put it on is the French pages, not the English pages, but this is going to be our French login module. So it needs to be displayed on the French language pages. French language. All right, that should be better. Let's go back up here and uh, refresh this a little bit. All right, so we have our English uh, pages here. It's the same pages we just saw. We also have our new language switcher module, which lets us switch between the different languages. Uh, so if we uh, click on this, we can see uh, our, our new content here that's translated and uh, displayed here just like the, the other site, except for, of course, it's in French. Um, and uh, we can see our getting a started article also in French as well. One other trick that's, uh, that we could do now in Joomla is uh, with our templates. You can see that you know, we can translate everything around the site, but one thing that still remains is our template. Uh, but we can solve that as well. And you see these English strings here that are kind of in the way. So if we come back to the back end here, we can head over to our template manager. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to duplicate the default style that we have. This is the, the template that, uh, the template style that's currently appearing on the home pages and all the other pages. So we've duplicated that. Uh, and what we can do very easily here is come uh, to the back here and assign this to our French pages. All right, so we're going to assign this to our French pages. So now instead of the other template showing, we've now got uh, this template style showing and the new template options that we have here. So actually, I did not translate this prior. So I'm going to jump over here and uh, translate this. Excuse me. And I'm sorry, it looks like it translates to be exactly the same, so that really doesn't help us here. But um, let's, uh, let's just add something else here to demonstrate uh, the differences that we, can, that we can have to, again, create this very smooth, seamless transition, and the entire site is presented in their language, not in the uh, original language. So if we refresh this now, uh, we get, you see here, the new, the new language string that's, that's available for us. Um, so again, this is designed to be able to present uh, our entire site, first of all, with the language strings that you can see here that translated the different areas 
uh, of the system output from Joomla, as well as our own content. So our entire site is now translated into two languages with um, easy navigation and switching between those languages. Um, this has been a small site, a small brochure site uh, type of site. But uh, if we set this up from the beginning with just about any type, uh, type or size of site, we can very easily present our entire site in really as many languages as we want and really increase the international or uh, multilingual capabilities of any Joomla site in Joomla 2.5. Um, that's, that's it. It's a very simple process. Ryan, are, are you still here? Can we uh, yeah. do you have any questions that we can take at this point? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Great presentation. Uh, I definitely picked up a few new things. Now, remember, we do have a lot of questions coming in. We have a little bit of time for that. If we don't get to your questions, you can always post a um, question to forums.joomla.org. There is a 2.5 category and a language forum within it. Now, um, this presentation will also be published at the cloudaccess.net YouTube channel for you to review afterward. Uh, John Frank had an interesting question. Frank Z, does the override section work through third-party extensions that are installed as well, or do they only work for core Joomla? Um, that, that, that's an interesting question, My uh, and actually one that I, I have not had the opportunity to, to try as an option um, here in, since we've updated to Joomla 2.5. Um, I, my my instinct is to say that yes, because uh, all this is doing is searching through the language files, and uh, regardless of what your extension is, the language files still sit in the same repository, the same directory in your site. So there's no reason it shouldn't work, uh, but that's something that you might want to test for yourself depending on which extension you're using. Okay. Frank, so the answer is test for yourself. Now, um, <laughs> Sorry, that couldn't give a more definite answer there. Now, some of our attendees, uh, several have commented on the same, the same thing. and um, uh, They're saying you forgot to publish the French menu in modules. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I just noticed that if you follow me here. Give me just a second. You know, I think we're on that white static screen. Uh-oh, uh am, am I not showing here? My apologies. All right, here we go. Um, where's my about Joomla? About Yes. Here we go. You're correct. I forgot to publish that one. So let me go back here and make sure it's published. Okay. All right. So can we see the way that looks on the front end? Yeah. One second. Here we go. Now here it's appearing below the the uh, mini module, but we can or the login module. But we can easily solve that through uh, the ordering available on the back end. Very cool. Okay, so this is our French navigation. Excellent. Again, I don't speak French, so not not necessarily translated all into French uh, on the fly here in our webinar, unfortunately. But I can do that really quick if you'd like. Well, I don't know that that's necessary. Um, Marco has a question. Marco says, "Great presentation so far. What are the best practices to download the articles, translate them offline?" Probably with, uh, or possibly with specific translations to uh, translation tools such as Cat Tools, and upload them back to Joomla. You know, this is an interesting question, uh, especially if you ha already have an established website. Um, and the answer for that is, is there's there's many ways that you can you know easily download and your your articles in bulk, and you know obviously manipulate them offline and re-upload them. 
One option that we've actually seen in the last couple of days that uh, is by a uh, Joomla extension developer, and it's really the only extension available of its kind, is, um, if I, let me pull it up here, it's a kind of a, uh, a uh, online uh, translation manager. And this is a component by Anything Digital. Uh, I'm just going to mention it here because it's really the only one out there of its kind. It was just released this last week, and I, in fact, I don't think they've actually even done an official release of it. But uh, you can check this out from anythingdigital.com, anything-digital.com. Uh, what this is is an online language manager that takes advantage specifically of the new Joomla 2.5 um, language manager. Uh, the articles stay in Joomla core. They're still all native articles. It's not like our older solutions like Joomfish or something that manage the content outside of Joomla core. But what it does is it allows you to take, a, say, an English article and create kind of um, uh, an association with a new French article so that you can very easily manage the translations between the two languages for all your content. Uh, so we're actually, personally myself, looking at that solution for several of our, of our sites. But I think that might, to answer that particular question, that might actually be a, a much better option and I think it will set you up for uh, much easier management in the long run um, of being able to translate those online yourself or even invite other translators to come help you collaborate on this. All right. Thank you for the question, Marco. Uh, Karen has a question. How many languages are available in the core translator? Um, you can add as many languages as you'd like to the Joomla Language Manager. There's really no limit on how many languages you can add. Um, the one limitation that you might run into is how many language teams and thus language translation packs have been generated by the Joomla community. Um, you know, there's only so many people that are available or are willing to help work on those. Again, if you go to the Joomla extensions directory, you can search for your language and find any find out if there's any of those packs available, um, but there's really no limit from the Joomla software side on how many languages you can have. And if you don't see one that uh, is available, um, again, go back to the Joomla forum and the language forum, and uh, I can, I'll can i bet you can find some other folks there that are interested in that language as well, and maybe you could collaborate and uh, uh, de help develop a, a language translation for whatever language you're looking for that currently doesn't have that option. All right. So, you know, Maud had a comment for a question that we just answered that Frank posted about third-party uh, translations for third-party extensions. And um, Maud commented that they do work for third-party extensions. Yeah, that, so. that's what I thought. There, there's really no reason they, they wouldn't. Again, everything, that, whether it's a core extension or a third-party extension, the language process works the exact same way. Um, so the overrides will work the exact same way. Okay, super. So, you know, I'm not sure if you touched on this um, already, but James had a comment or a question. How about plugin and component management? I think you may have discussed um, across, it. Across languages? Yeah, I, I think I, that's probably what he's asking. Yes, across languages, yep. Okay, um, so for the core language strings, you know, the, the, the language strings that are output by um, the the component or the plugin, those will again be able to be managed like we just talked about through the uh, uh, language manager, language overrides. Many of your major components these days include their own language packs that you can upload and install and again you can override those for, for that as well. As far as managing the content of whatever that component is, say it's um, K2 or another content construction kit or maybe a SOBI or something like that, that has its own content. Unfortunately, the core translation um, uh, features that we have here um, will work similarly because, um, you know, for example, if we have a, a K2 has its own category system that you can still assign languages to. The big thing as far as uh, the site's front end and allowing users to do that is the navigation system that we set up. So you would follow a similar process of setting up different categories, assigning those languages, um, and then you again follow a similar process, adding those menu items to the menus here 
to allow your users to access that component on the front end. The one problem I could see there that you might run into is um, with components like Jom Social or something like that where you don't have different versions or different categories, uh, but where everything's kind of served from one central place. And uh, there you might have to um, see what that particular component's process is for handling different languages and if they offer the capability to automatically switch languages. Okay. Now, James had a, a second question, kind of piggybacking, not exactly. Uh, he asked, uh, can we restrict through IP addresses for users who visit for language access? Um, no, uh, with the core capabilities here, um, that's not really uh, uh, able to do that. It's not really meant to do that. Uh, it switches language bases on, based on their uh, language settings. So if you're a French speaker, if, you, if you're a French citizen or French you know, resident and you're happening to visit the United States but you still have your browser set on French, it's still going to show you the French uh, version of the site because um, your computer and browser settings are set to French. So the core is not really set up to do kind of geo-targeted uh, as far as you know your actual geographical or physical location, um, but uh, that that might be something that can be handled through different plugins, and I, I believe there already are available solutions to handle that out that are outside of the core but easily integrated into Joomla. But as far as the core options that we're talking about here, no. Okay, so. Uh, Keith asked a question or commented, I noticed the menu buttons, however, did not change languages. They didn't, um, again, as you can see here, well, actually, let me go back up here. Um, they, they, they didn't change because I neglected to translate them myself. Uh, so you see back here, uh, this still says park blog, even though we're in the French language. And uh, that's just my fault for neglecting to translate those appropriately kind of on the fly here. Again, I don't speak French, so anything I do in French has to you know, go through Google Translate really quick unless somebody is doing that for me. Um, so that, that's why those aren't, aren't showing up appropriately here. As you see, we've, we've actually switched the modules here. Um, so this one that I actually just threw in, in Google Translate is showing up correctly. The one I didn't do is up here in this top menu. And again, that's a similar process of going over here, uh, finding our top menu item, restricting it to uh, only show on the pages selected, and removing it from the French menu item, saving that. And uh, following a similar process that we did um, with, actually, let me set this to uh, English as well. Following a similar process that we did with all the all the other modules, uh, we'll first duplicate this, uh, and then come in here, publish it, uh, set it to show on the French page, but not the English pages, and choose the French menu. So as we come back up here to the front, what we should see is, did I forget to publish that? Where did it go? Only on the pages selected. French. Am I on the French menu? Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so that, that was my fault for not um, translating all those menu items properly. I apologize. So uh, you can see here, I, I just switched that really quickly, and this middle one here that I've translated really quickly through Google Translate uh, is showing the, the correct translation, and I can translate this other one really quickly here too, just to clear up that confusion. Uh, but it's a similar process of, of creating, the different, creating the different modules um, and assigning them to their correct pages. That's, that's all that I was missing there. Thank you for that. Yeah, uh, Peter had an interesting question. Um, wouldn't it be better to make a different site on a subdomain with a different language? Uh, what are the benefits to keeping it all within one domain? 
Well, there's there's many benefits to keeping it all within one domain. I think first of all, um, just with the the time needed to manage two sites. Here we have one site, one set of extensions, one set of updates, and we accomplish the exact same thing. On that second site, you're still going to have to set up categories. You're still going to have to create all the articles. You're still going to have to do everything, except for you have additional overhead on top of that. The other thing that we get here is we get uh, automatic uh, language detection through a core Joomla plugin. We get um, uh, user, uh, all the users are obviously synchronized, although there's no synchronization to do because it's all on the same site. And uh, you know you get to take advantage of that. For example, if we did have a community like John Social or a community builder available here, um, that would obviously all stay synchronized as well because it's all on the same site. So I think the benefit is, is that you could do a subdomain um, and you'll be, but the hang up in there is you'll be following the exact same process we followed here. You'll be setting up new menu items, setting up new articles, setting up new modules, except for you have a lot of additional overhead and a lot of additional bridges to gap or bridges to cross to fill in there uh, when it comes to things like user management, community management, stuff like that. Okay. Now we do have a couple, uh, a little bit more time for questions, uh, but you know we do have a lot of questions. So if we don't get to yours, remember they're available, um, uh, you, or you can post questions to forum.joomla.org, and a recording of this will be available through Joomla's YouTube channel as well as cloudaccess.net's YouTube channel. So Marco did have an interesting question um, that he's been clarifying for me. Can you set Joomla so that the Spanish article is presented when Catalan is chosen from the language switcher? In Joomfish, this was possible. When Catalan, I'm, I'm sorry, maybe I'm, I'm missing what the connotation there is, what, what, if you don't mind clarifying that. So when another language is selected, uh, can it sort of redirect to um, a language of your choice? Um, definitely. I think, I think I, I'm, I'm not sure if that's something that you would do on a, on a regular basis or, or why you would do that. I'm sure there are use cases for doing that. Um, but again, everything's based off of our menu structure here as far as the navigation goes. You know, we set up our French homepage here and we said which articles we wanted to show on that French homepage. We set up our other French menu items here and we said which articles we want to show on that. So. Um, if if I switch, you know, if I if I'm over here and I switch to English, but I want uh, my uh, uh, a Spanish article to show up here, for example, uh, then I would do the same process except for when I choose my article in the menu item manager, I would choose that Spanish article. Um, off the top of my head, I I can't think of exactly why we would do that, but again, there I'm sure there are reasons why we we should do that and. That, that's probably the easiest way to do that is just to simply use the menu structure that we're already using to redirect to that article. Okay. So let's see. Um, Marco, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, Marco said that those are uh, usually referred to as fallbacks. Right. Okay. So um, let's see. Varen asks, if we're dealing with more than two or three languages, how should we differentiate um, these in different folders and categories or menus to avoid confusion? Uh, that's a good question and you know we run into this problem even when we're just dealing with a single language uh, site. When you, when you start getting uh, you know, sites like we deal with in the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of articles. Um, as far as the navigation, this is why I create separate menus. You could probably manage all of this through one menu here um, and just be able to you know, assign the languages and then assign um, the home page for each language. But uh, even for a small site, it's a lot easier to use two separate menus. And I'm sure as you grow into larger sites, that even makes, make, makes even more sense to use separate menus for everything to keep those organized. Uh, as far as categories, we only have a couple categories here. But if I did have a lot of categories, I would probably set an over, overriding category. I would have a top-level category of English and all my English categories under that, a top-level category of French, all my categories under that, etc. So that I could easily see 
not only my category hierarchy, but I can see my entire site hierarchy um, through the category manager or through the article manager and definitely the menus. Okay. Um, uh, another question. Sometimes users will use a web browser in English, even if they're in a different language, for example, mm -hmm. Spanish. Um, I think we already answered this. Uh, yeah, so I if you use a web browser that's English, even though you're a Spanish speaker, um, you're obviously going to get directed to the home page. For example, let's use French, since we have French here. So if, if I'm um, a French, speaking, a French speaker, but uh, I'm using an English browser or some, for some reason, uh, this is going to take me to uh, my, my English home page here. Okay. But very easily after that, now right here is down on the side, but you can place these flags in any module position in your site's template. Very easily after that I can switch to my other language, to my French language, and be able to see my content in my French language, or in your case, Spanish. All right, and another question from James, and I don't know if this is for, for you, John, or a third-party developer, but uh, can we convert Joomfish content to this structure directly? Um, I've heard that there is uh, somebody developing um, that process, uh, a Joomfish back to Joomla native converter. Um, again, I just heard that in the last couple of days, and I have not been able to convert, confirm it myself. I would personally be very interested in that because, again, prior to now, we do have a lot of sites that you know are managed in Joomfish. But uh, I've heard that that's being developed, so maybe keep your eyes out, and uh, if you find it, definitely let me know, too. <laughs> right, and uh, Ken commented A-plus on the presentation. Thank you very much. Sully has a question. Notice that the banner image contains a green ribbon with English text. Could you review the process for making sure that the system could call a French language version of the image instead? Absolutely. Um, so this, this, if you're noticing here, this is a, a banner that you're going to be, you know, that you see here. Um, if we come back here, well, first let me go back to our template manager. We, when we did this, we just looked at the the specific language here, but we can change the logo to start with, um, the, especially in this template that's controlled here. But uh, when you you know when you get outside the core templates and you're using uh, another template vendor um, and their templates, the process will obviously be differently depending be different depending on what um, what template vendor you're using, how they manage their logos. You know some template vendors provide their option here. Some template vendors uh, make you do it through a file upload and CSS and stuff like that. So uh, the key is just to to use your menus, use your template styles. I mean to create additional styles and um, however your template uses those, uses in this case the logo or the banner here, um, adjust those appropriately within the template style. But um, that, that's why we created the additional template style so that we can change, you know, we have full control over what appears there, whether it be a banner or, you know, say we want to change the, say we even want to change the, uh, font or the color of text or something here to match our new language. I don't know. Um, that can all be controlled through your additional template styles that we have in Joomla 1.6 plus sites. Yeah, a few folks have asked about 1.5 and um, sort of uh, updating, updating mm -hmm. to 2.5 using this tool. Uh, um, it updated to 2.5 um, uh, is, is is a process in and of itself, and and uh, you know that's been documented, well documented for actually updating the content. If all your content is in Joomla core, this is going to be a very easy process since it's just in the article manager already, and you're just going to go through this process that we just went through, as far as you know, adding the navigation and putting the content in the correct categories and stuff like that. If it's outside of Joomla core, say in K2 or something, maybe in Joomfish. That kind of complicates things a little bit, but um, pretty much the 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 that that's the big differentiator here, differentiator here or the big question. If your content's in Joomla core, you'll just upgrade to 2.5 and follow the exact same process that we went through here. If it's not, you might have to do a little bit of digging and see if you can uh, utilize uh, the new features or or if your component is even 
uh, available to directly upgrade. For example, K2 uses is compatible with JUpgrade to upgrade uh, K2 from 1.5 to 2.5, and then you can implement a similar structure in K2. All right. Um, now, a couple of our users have been asking again um, if this is can we view this after the presentation? And you certainly can on uh, mm -hmm. the uh, Joomla on Joomla's YouTube channel um, and CloudAccess.net YouTube channel. Um, we also I think we have time for one more question, and sure, sure. it's Peter's question: Are there still limits in Joomla links, which lets us say non-English letters? if there is a certain type of um, accent on a letter? Um, uh, I don't think, I, I'm not sure if, if that, I mean obviously it's not directly tied to the, the language manager itself. If there was a restriction there, it would be a, a, a different problem that needs addressed outside of the language manager. Uh, I've, I have seen restrictions on that before and I don't know if those have been um, addressed directly, but if they haven't been addressed, that's, that's probably something that uh, should be reported to the, uh, you know, either through the Joomla forum or, or on the Joomla bug squad list, uh, let them know so that we can uh, try to fix that as well, as fast as possible. All right. Well, that was very, very um, informative, John. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Really quickly here. Um, before we end, I, I, I just want to uh, go over here to the Joomla forum and, and show you what forum Ryan's talking about here. If you didn't get your question answered, we're kind of out of time here, but in the Joomla forum here that's loading up in just a second, we'll show hopefully on your screens as well, there's a specific language forum available, uh, and here you'll, you'll be able to you know, really access the entire community, not just ask myself. So I'm on the Joomla forum page. I'm going to scroll down in here to the Joomla 2.5 section and uh, in here somewhere, here we go, uh, we have a language forum. Uh, feel free to post all your questions in here. There is uh, a great set of moderators and Joomla support folks that are always monitoring these and uh, will be more than happy to answer your questions and help you navigate through any problems or questions that you have with upgrading uh, and using Joomla language manager in Joomla 2.5. Okay, now you're getting a lot of nice compliments here from people, John. Wonderful webinar. Thanks a lot. Thank you, guys. So at this point, we do have to end the webinar. I want to thank everyone for attending, and please check into the Joomla YouTube channel to view a recording of this.